Well, in a really frustrating turn of events, it turns out that this camera here wasn't recording the whole time because of a card issue, which is great. So today I am going to be rebuilding this um, headshot damper. This is a unit from a um, fatty, I believe, and it's a 70 mm um, version. And yeah, I'm just going to get through it. And. If you see anything that I'm doing here that you have any questions about, let me know and hopefully I can provide some more insights or go into things in more details. So I've already stripped everything down, taken off all of the O-rings and now I'm basically just going to be reassembling, putting in new oil and uh, putting it all back together. first part I'm going to work on is the top section of the shaft, putting everything back onto here, putting on the top cap for the damper body and all of the associated internals before placing on the lower section and doing all of that up. These are the bumpers and spacers for the top section and although they look like O-rings they're really just bumpers uh, so if they're in good condition you don't need to change them, they're not holding any oil or anything like that. Um, so I'm just going to be reusing those from the original ones. But what obviously I do need to replace is the seals and o rings on the um, the actual sliding component that moves up and down in this shaft. So I have this set that was sent to me by Rockfu from Improve Part and these ones are new versions of the V groove seals. They're nice and soft and supple. I've used them before. So we're going to be putting two in this top section. tend to just work a bit of grease in there and this is slick honey grease which is for suspension components there's other products available I just happen to like this one and then effectively you just want to get the seals into the grooves inside with the V shape the open top of the V pointing towards the thread. As this, when it threads onto the um, cylinder, uh, onto the damper body, you want the, the opening of the V to point towards where the oil is. Because when the oil pressure presses against this, it expands and stops it from getting out. So that's the easiest way to think to, to remember when you're putting it on. Just think about which side is the oil on, and the, you want the oil to be on the side that's open. And generally you can, these ones are fairly supple, you can massage them on with your fingers. Uh, I've had cases where you get some really stiff seals and you need to use some sort of uh, implement to get them on, but uh, in this case these ones go on pretty well.
and then I'm taking one of the seals that go on the top. The measurements for all of these are generally available within some manuals and also you can just compare them when you get the seal kits um, to what comes off. Uh, so I always keep the old ones just in case for reference in case I find something that doesn't seem to make sense. Okay, let's put this, the components onto this part here. So first goes a damper, a little bumper. And then after that we have to put this on. So we're going to use a bullet tool for that. What this bullet tool does is it just stops the uh, lip of the shaft here from pinching the seals that are installed. So then at this point we just slide it carefully on. So now this goes up and down and we can feel it has a bit of grip. It's not uh, it's certainly loose, but it's also not binding or anything. Then after that we have another bumper, a metal shim, a bumper, a shim, a bumper, and a shim. And that stack will then effectively end up there when we finish putting this together. The next part is the uh, valving body and the components that come from that. In this case, we've got two identical um, valving shims. These are the ones that control how the oil flows through. Um, in some cases you might have one that's bigger, one that's smaller. So just bear that in mind when you take it off, check and see what order they come off in, don't put them the wrong way around. And then for this we're going to need a seal that sits over the top. And we also need a, a ring that goes inside. Let me just take one of those out. So let's get this this uh, O-ring in here. This one is to seal the shaft for the lockout. And on this I'm going to use a pick. And I'm just using the pick very carefully to get the seal into place without scratching anything. Now here I'm just using dentistry picks that I just bought on Amazon. Um, you just want to make sure that whatever you use that you're using it without a huge amount of force. Okay so that's that inner seal done. And then these two um, valve shims they go in here and then this metal copper washer. It's got a bevel on it and you want the bevel to be pointing um, so that the flat side is on the top. That allows when the oil comes up for these to actually spring open and so they will, these two will spring open against this valving body, uh, against this um, shim sorry, and allow the oil through. If it's the wrong way around, then it's not going to allow the oil to come through properly. So then we have this is just uh, mostly to retain those and a seat for the top section to clamp against. So there's red Loctite in here, um, and I had to defeat that with heat 
when I took this apart. And so at this point, we can put some raved Loctite in there, just a drop, and get this back on. I'm actually going to wipe some of that away, it's maybe a bit too much. Okay, so I'm just going to start it off by hand. I just need to wipe this clean. Then I can tighten it up. I can actually tighten it up with these two. Okay, so that's seated. So this is the, and then you can press these down. This is the top part, now ready to go back on there. And then we have the bottom half, which we could take all of this apart, but we can just reassemble it. Um, and then introduce the two together. So, we start off with these two uh, I think they're Teflon or something like that, rings. I um, can't remember what plastic they're from. Uh, but these both sit here and they allow the spring perch to ride on. This is the bottom spring, spring perch and I've inspected it, it looks fine, um, there's no reason to change it. Again, the spring, it's like new, it doesn't even have any paint coming off it, it doesn't have paint coming off it, uh, but this one looks great, so it's going back on. Then there's the upper spring perch. Then there is a a ring that just sits on the top of the shaft here. And this uh, this will actually end up. Oh, I can actually put it on afterwards, but this will end up sitting around here. And here's the bottom part that goes on the, the bottom seal of the oil section. And I'm going to put the, again, the V groove seals on there. And again, oil is on this side, so the V opening of the V goes towards the oil. Be careful when I use this, the picks here. 
to use the flat side of the pick, I'm not using the pointy side. I don't want to penetrate the, the seal or anything, I'm just using it as a, to push. And I'm just having a look to see that it's properly oriented. I tend to like to give it a spin around with a flat edge just to make sure it's seated inside. And the second one. Sorry about the grotty plaster on my thumb. I was uh, drilling, some, well, actually, I was screwing in the. I was running in a bolt on something and it went through the other side and decided to cut a nice little disc out of my thumb, which was annoying. But it kind of hurts with uh, suspension fluid and brake clean and grease. So, gotta keep it. Keep it plastered. Okay. It also makes it a bit harder to work on things when you haven't really got much use of your thumb. There we go. Okay, so at this point in time, uh, I'm actually putting it on backwards, and so I don't actually have to worry about the um, bullet tool on this side. Oh, I do need to put the other seal on. Just giving it a double check, making sure I've not forgotten anything. Yep, that's looking good. Okay. So, between these two components, when these slide together, there's going to be these, and these are the lockout shims. And these sit in a very specific spot. And there's one that's cupped, so it it's like a like a plate, like a dish and you want it to be dished facing upwards and these break very easily when somebody over tightens or something so uh, yeah just bear that in mind and then its partner goes on top just go check that they're oh, one around just go check that they're aligned there we go and so you should be able to see through both of them and then this pin is going to ride in this groove here. And the pin is what allows the lockout on off to work. So I need to grease this now. This has already kind of got plenty of grease, so I just need to introduce the two to each other. And then this pin, as I said, is going to go on this longer side. You just need to make sure that they're all perfectly seated before you put them together. And then you have lockout, you have... So now those two components are working correctly. But it needs to have this in here. So this comes apart. You could also take this bottom section out, but there's not really much need for it with this setup. There is other setups. So the only thing you have to bear in mind when you do it this way is you do have to 
have a pretty good feel for when you've actually got it into alignment. So if you're worried about that, then you maybe want to take off the bottom pin. And you don't need to nip this up really tight, you just need to nip it up tight enough. You don't want to be uh, crushing things. So I can see where those components are, and I know where the pin of this is. So again, I get it aligned, and then the pin. I actually can sometimes use the castellation on here to align. Oh, and I forgot something. Look at that. I forgot this earring here. Thanks for pointing that out. I almost forgot. That's what happens when I'm talking too much. And this fell off because it got stuck on. But I can see it's in the right place. This is probably one of these things of uh, do as I say and not as I do and actually remove the bottom section to make sure that you don't end up with these shims out of alignment. Anyways, now we have all of the seals in place. I can see that it's aligned down there. So we're bringing them together. Okay, and I can feel where it's looking on and off. Now, we actually need to put the top on before I do anything else so that we don't have this come apart again. So there is a nut that doesn't actually act as a nut, it's just like a press fit piece and there's two washers and these washers sit in between and they allow there to be a smooth turning of this and then this gets press fit on and there's many ways to press fit it on and one of the ways is to tap it undramatically with a hammer And you just want to make sure there's still some play there. You want to make sure that there wasn't any play. And it still turns. And this turns nicely. And there isn't any play. Okay. So now, at this point in time, we are ready to put some oil in. The last part we need is this little screw. And I just want to check and see if there's a seal on here, because I thought I checked it before. Yeah. So I've got a screw with a new seal on it, which goes on here. This is a bleed screw. We're going to need this during the bleed procedure, so I need to get it installed now. I'll just grab my screwdriver. Well, in a really frustrating turn of events, it turns out that this camera here wasn't recording the whole time because of a card issue, which is great. Um, and because of the way I had it set up, it wasn't alerting me. So. Uh, yeah, I might have missed out on a couple of things I was reviewing the footage and some of the stuff you can't really see very well from this camera here. Uh, for example, when I was putting on 
this um, nut. I was effectively just hammering it down until it's seated at the right depth where there's no play. Um, I'm going to have to redo it, rebuild something else later on, so I'll just film it again. It's just a bit of a hassle to take it all apart, take off all the seals and everything just to fit, you know, fill in a couple of gaps. But yes, frustrating. Anyways, so I'm actually having to reshoot this because camera issues. Uh, so if you see that I'm wearing a different color sweater, that's why. Um, anyways finished the putting it back together as I had before and I am just going to go through the bleed procedure as before. So that's some leftover oil that I had that I hadn't used yet. Um, so what we're going to do is put oil into the damper and then cycle it up and down so that it moves through the shims. And whenever you hear that gurgling noise, that's the air cavitating in the oil, making bubbles. I'm just making sure to work it through its extension. Once it's near the top here, uh, that's plenty of oil. Some of it will leak out when I put it all together. So, don't need to get it right to the brim, this will be filling that space. At this point, I will leave it sitting here on the stand for the any bubbles to rise up, and I'll come back to that shortly. So now, I've let it sit for a bit, and I'm now engaging the lockout, and bringing it back, sorry, disengaging the lockout, bringing it up, engaging the lockout, and then pushing it down and I can hear the air moving through. There's still a bit of air in the lockout circuit. And so by doing this, you're basically working out those last bits of, of air from the lockout side of things.
and once more we will leave it to sit get some more oil in it let it rest again It's amazing how much my camera ends up covered in oil after doing this and trying to record it. <sighs> okay. So we're just gonna work it a bit more. All feels pretty smooth. Don't see any bubbles on the surface. Just put a tiny bit more in there. Now we're ready to bolt down the top. Uh, the bleed screw here needs to be turned half a turn open. And that will allow any trapped oil from um, it will allow the trapped oil to escape through the bleed screw rather than just over pressurizing the internals. Once it's tightened up here, just tighten up the bead screw. It's all feeling nice and smooth. And it's feeling pretty solid on the lock outside. We have the seals on the piston. Put a bit of grease on these. And we have the air cylinder. Just gonna pop a bit of the remaining oil down into the cylinder. Doesn't need much. We're going to take our unit that we prepared in the previous video and place the cylinder down into it. Then we have the this nylon spacer ring. This goes onto the bottom there. Uh, this piston just slides into here. There is some that are threaded. Uh, this is not one of them. This is one that just slides on. And then we just take this and insert it into the air piston, into the air cylinder. I have the valve, the press the valve, sorry, tray the valve at the bottom loose so it'll let any air through otherwise that's hard to get in. Now we take our castle tool and we start to thread this guy in here. Let's 
point uh, upon Okay. It's now installed. Let's go out of there. Now I just need to tighten the top section up. And then we're going to tighten up the shader valve, the shader valve core, so it's well seated. And then we're going to put some air in it, test and see how it's doing. I'm going to pump it up to probably about 80 psi, which is around 5 bar. Pressure is holding so far. So we will undo this and let's take a look, see how it feels. Right. So has a good air spring. And then I lock it out, and it won't move. So I'd say that's feeling good. So the last things we need to do is just put this over the lip, put some uh, zip ties on it. I'll just make sure we've got some, plenty of grease around there. Uh, and then it's ready to install on the bike. Um, I'm going to leave it off for now, I'm going to leave it apart just to make sure everything's okay over the next few days, make sure there isn't some slow leak happening and then I will go ahead and do that. But that is basically it. Um, I'm going to be doing some more damper rebuilds because there isn't really much footage about them um, and there's a lot of different considerations for some of the variants. So as I mentioned, there's like two types of bleeds on most of these, but there's a few uh, there's a few other variations and um, some differences in how you take them apart as well. I'm also going to be doing a Moto FR, which I have here, which is just waiting for me to film. Um, and I already did a bit of work on it just to, to actually get it going because it was so rusty. And I have a lefty DLR that I'm also about to film. And I've got some new parts to show off, uh, new tools, uh, which I got sent from Improved Part. Uh, yeah, so that's all coming. And I um, appreciate the patience. And sometimes it takes me a long time to get around to doing these things um, when life gets in the way and work. 
But anyways, thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one.